Hey, this is Antonio. Welcome back to my channel. Now, who's ready for some fighting words? In this video, I want to do a fight breakdown for Canelo Alvarez versus Jamel Charlo. Um, really quick, if you like the videos, please take the time, subscribe to the channel. It only takes one click. Uh, a lot is going on in boxing, and I want to be the one to report that to you and also break and analyze a lot of fights down for you. Also, hit that thumbs up button. It really does help support this channel. And if you're unfamiliar with how I do things, basically, I just put both combatants side by side run down a list of attributes. Whoever has more points in the end, that's the individual that I'm going with. Without further ado, let's start this off. Boxing IQ. Um, I don't really, I think we all know it's gonna be Canelo Alvarez. I mean, he he's, has a whole lot more fights than Jamal Charlo, but on top of that, he's fought a who's who of boxing in the last 20 years. You know, so it's obvious it's gonna be him when it comes to boxing IQ. He's faced a lot more opponents. He's faced a lot more uh, styles. Uh, in the ring, and and also a ton of greats. Uh, so it's going to be Canelo Alvarez. Experience. Um, again, it's going to be Canelo Alvarez. He has more fights, um, but also top-notch opponents. It's not like he's been fighting slackers or, or nobodies for the, for the last 10 years, um, 15 years for that matter. But on top of that, a lot of the guys that Canelo has fought, they're in the Hall of Fame. That should let you know just where he is in the, in the, the realm of experience. I mean, just his fight with Floyd Mayweather alone, it, I personally believe, was it a loss? Yes, it was a loss, but I personally believe that it changed his life for the better in terms of his boxing ring. Um, so what's next? Defense. So here's my thoughts. Um, I feel like Jabril Troll has better defense. So Canelo does have solid defense. He's a very slippery guy. But 98% of his defense is from the waist up. He has great head movement. Uh, he's very slippery up top. You know, he can do the shoulder roll and all that. But he's a very stationary target. When you look at Jamal Charlo, he also fights with his legs a lot. Um, it's, and that's in the, in the form of distance. That's in the form of range. That's in the form of just moving around, not being a stationary target. Uh, but also, he can do all the things that Canelo can do. He has great head movement. Um, he also has just a great guard on top of that. Very tight guard, you know. He doesn't really give anything away. You got to work for it. And that's for both Charlo uh, brothers. But he also has another thing. He's good with hand placement. And that's one thing Canelo doesn't have. So when I look at the two of them, I got to give that to uh, Jamal Charlo. Uh, cardio, got to give it to Charlo. Uh, who's more of a racehorse? Now, Canelo has been the distance, you know, several times in his career. Dozens of times, actually. But Canelo has this thing where he likes to take breaks. Um, and so, number one, he's a slow starter. But on top of that, he'll take a break. And he, he will take several breaks. Or he'll just be, you know, maybe a little lazy. He'll lean on the ropes or whatever. Charlo, on the other hand, he's like a racehorse. He's trying to take your head off from round one to whenever he finishes you. That's kind of his MO. He's a headhunter, and he wants you out of there. He doesn't want to leave it to the judges, especially after what happened with him and Tony Harrison. So he doesn't want to leave it to the judges. But he can go, and he's typically the aggressor, and he, and he can throw a lot of punches in a round. Um, and that leads me to the, um, the next, which would be punch output. And I would definitely say that's Jamal Charlo as well. Um, hands down, that's Jamal Charlo. Punch output, I mean, he can throw easily, you know, 50, 60 punches in a round, you know, and I don't think that's a problem for him. And if he's in a firefight, he has the reserves of where he can throw even more. When you look at Canelo, he doesn't throw a whole lot of punches. He's very reserved with his punches, but he's also very selective with the punches that he's going to throw. Um, and again, like I said, he's a late starter. So a lot of times Canelo can lose the first two rounds easy just because he's not doing anything. I, I get it. He can, he's doing a lot of computing in his mind, but he's not doing much in, in terms of offense. Um, and then we look at the course of the fight. Who's going to be more offensive? Who's going to have more of a punch output? By, by far, it's going to be Jamal Charlo. Um, speed, Jamel Charlo. Come on, Jamel Charlo. Like, that, that's a no-brainer. Um, like I said, when it comes to uh, Canelo Alvarez, he deals more with timing. He's great at timing. He's great at distance. He's great at timing. But, and basically getting uh, his opponents their cadence down. But when you look at Jamel Charlo, he's actually really fast. Um, he's fast with his legs. Again, he's just a complete fighter in terms of everything he does. Great mobility, very fluid with his hands. He's not afraid to let anything go. Um, so what's next? Footwork. Jamal Charlo, I just said. Um, Canelo Alvarez is a very stationary target. He's good at cutting off the ring, 
but there's no special effects in terms of his uh his footwork you're not going to see anything great or you know wow i gotta rewind that no he's very basic in his footwork all of the, all of his 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 technique is you know his hands that's it um being slippery up top head movement but in terms of his legs not much he has a very wide base as well you know so he can generate a lot of power he, a lot of times he likes to basically shrink in low and then explode up top but when you look at Jamal Charlo he's taller he stands tall uh, and he fights like a tall fighter uh, he like I said he doesn't really give a whole lot away but because he's throwing so much a lot of guys kind of succumb to the firepower that's going after him however you're dealing with Canelo Alvarez who's a great counter puncher and that's going to be welcome he's going to need Jamal Charlo to be Jamal Charlo so he can beat Canelo Alvarez at his fullest and finest which is Great timing and counter punching. Uh, let's see, durability. So, both guys are very durable. Neither guy has been down. Um, the second, the the first and second Castano fight with with uh, Charlo was really good. Uh, but he did face some adversity. Um, however, I'm only gonna give it to Canelo because he has faced the bigger, stronger guys. I mean, he had three wars with Triple G. I do believe he lost the first fight to Triple G, but that's another video. Um, but yeah, just only because of the Triple G fight, and Triple G, especially Triple G, the first fight. Um, Canelo can take a bomb. He can take bombs. And, you know, it, it's going to be interesting who's, who can take what in this fight. Because both guys are very heavy-handed. Both guys are very explosive. And once the, once, once the fight really gets going, I'm saying like round three, four, five, once the fight really gets going, it's going to be interesting to see who's going to be taking a back step. Because neither guy is used to taking back steps. Jamel Charlo is not used to taking back steps. Canelo Alvarez, once he gets going, he has taken back steps, obviously, the Bival fight, uh, the Triple G fight. He has taken back steps. But typically, and I don't think, you know, with somebody of Jamel Charlo's size, well, he'll be taking a whole lot of back steps. So it's going to be a very interesting fight. Um, who gives ground to who? Uh, versatility. So... Obviously, Canelo Alvarez has faced, you know, more of an array of opponents. So it would have to be Canelo Alvarez. But I would say it's a tie only because Jamal Charlo's taken on the best of the best of his division. And they did not come in the same size and the same form. Um, and they, they all presented their own you know, level of adversities and, you know, struggles and trials and tribulations. And he handled them all. Um, now, neither guy really stretches too far from who they are. You know, they, they, it's not like they're going to be, neither guy's a Floyd Mayweather or a Terrence Bud Crawford, um, where they'll change how they look based upon the opponent that they're facing. Neither guy is really that. Um, but I just have to give it to Canelo Alvarez simply because of the, uh, the well, how many guys he's faced, how many styles he's been up against. You got to give it to Canelo Alvarez. I mean, because... Yes, he's climbed a lot of mountains, but he's conquered all of those mountains. Let's see, except for Baval and Floyd Mayweather. Um, Hart. This one's a tie. Uh, I mean, so here's the thing. Has anyone ever been like in such a dire need where, I don't know, I think he's about to go out? No, neither guy's been in that, in that position. However, uh, Canelo and um, uh, Jamel Charlo have both have losses. And... Hart is also in the form of going back and trying to conquer the thing that conquered you. Um, Canelo Alvarez tried to make the rematch with uh, Bivol. Uh, personally, I don't think he should. I don't think he should ever go down that road again. He wanted to make the, the well, he did make the rematch with Triple G. Um, he wanted to make the rematch with Floyd Mayweather. Basically, anybody who beats him or anybody where there's a conversation where somebody can make the argument that Canelo Alvarez lost to that person, he'd want a rematch. You got to respect that, and that's a lot of heart. Uh, same thing with Jamel Charlo. You know, he ran it back with Castano. Um, he ran it back with Harrison. Uh, you know, I don't really feel like he lost to Harrison the first time, but nonetheless, he ran it back with Harrison. And he didn't leave. This is kind of where, you know, the, the curve is kind of twisted because um, Jamel Charlo didn't leave it in the hands of the judge. He took full control of his destiny and he knocked out his opponent both times with Castano and with Tony Harrison. That's the only reason why I'm leaning a little bit more with uh, Jamel Charlo because he finished the guys that he rematched. 
Uh, let's see, mentality. So let's see. I I feel like Charlo has more of a championship mentality right now, only because he's daring to be great. This is not a daring to be great fight for uh, Canelo Alvarez. This is a let me finish out my contract fight, and at least by doing this fight, I don't have to face uh, David Benavidez. At least I'll get off my back for another few months if I take on Jamal Charlo. So when I look at a championship mentality, I gotta give it to Jamal Charlo. He's taking on a guy two weight classes above his. Um, he's taking on arguably the, the pound for pound best uh, boxer in the war world right now. You gotta give it to him. He's putting it all on the line. He's risking being knocked out. You know, this is a weight class he's never even fought at. You gotta give it to him. That's a championship mentality. I can't necessarily in this fight give it to Canelo Alvarez because like I said, I don't feel like he feels like there's a whole lot of risk. And if he don't feel that, why should he get this nod? Um, he should not be fighting Jamal Charlo. Let's make that clear. He should not be fighting Jamal Charlo. But since he is, Charlo gets the credit for this fight. Canelo does not get the credit for this fight because he should not be fighting Charlo. Charlo, he wins money, he gets belts, he gets notoriety, and he becomes the king of the sport. He has all the reason in the world to take this fight. Canelo, there's no reason in the world he should have had this fight presented to him and him saying yes to it. Those are my thoughts. Uh, so, Jamal Charlo. Confidence. Uh, this is tough. Um, not really sure who's more confident. I think both guys are champions. Both guys, you know, undisputed. Um, well, not Charlo anymore. But... Um, I don't know. I, I still got to give it to... Um, so here's the thing. Charlo's going to where Canelo is. So I'm just saying that I feel like he has more confidence because of that. Because he knows what's at stake. And he knows, listen, you can get knocked out. You could get brutally knocked out. You don't even know how you're going to perform at this weight. You don't know if you're going to have your stamina. You don't know if you're going to have your cardio. You don't know if you're going to have your punching power. You don't know. Everything's a mystery. You don't know. So, in terms of confidence, again, I got to give him the nod. I don't see a whole lot of confidence coming from uh, Canelo Alvarez because, once again, you should not be in this fight, period. Uh, power. Uh, I don't know how, how Charles going to look at this weight, but he's been on a tear and he's knocked out everybody in his path. He, you know, they both hit hard, though. So, I'm just going to give this a, a tie. Canelo Alvarez is no slouch, and he can put guys down. And it's going to be really interesting to see how they both handle body shots. I want to. Well, I think the biggest question is: Is Jamel Charles' power going to trans transfer to the higher weight? So we'll have to wait and see for that. Um, so looking at my tally, I have Jamel Charlo winning with seven to Canelo's three. So that's the person I will be going with. I feel very strongly this is not a good fight for Canelo Alvarez, um, but. I have another segment here, which is basically I just ask, what can hurt the other guy uh, in terms of their chances? What can hurt Canelo? Um, Canelo likes to wait in fights. He, he's a very stationary target. That waiting can get him in big trouble. We already know that Jamel Trollo is going to have a higher punch output. We already know that Jamel Trollo starts round one. We already know that Jamel Trollo hits hard. We already know that, you know... Jamal Trollo, he's just a hard worker. He's going to work every round, all three minutes of the round. So I don't know about that weight for Canelo. He does it a lot. Uh, let's see. Uh, what can hurt Charlo? Rushing and not easing into the fight. So like I just said, he has a huge gas tank, and he will just rush into the fire. And Canelo Alvarez is not the guy you want to do that with. I think it is one of his safer bets, move, you know, in, the, in the, the opening rounds because we all know that Canelo is a slow starter. But as the rounds get, they increase, I don't know if that's going to be the smartest thing for Jamel Charlo to just rush in to, to the fray. I do think it's important for Jamel Charlo to be first in every single exchange. Um, let's see. What can hurt Canelo? Taking breaks and resting on those ropes. He is notorious for taking breaks and resting on the ropes. That's a place you don't want to be. Again, Jamel Charlo is very good with his hand placement, how he can maneuver guys. If you want a perfect example of this, look at the second Castano fight. He did it very well to get off the ropes, but he also would put, uh, he put Castano on the ropes, I think, two or three times. And he kept him there. He maneuvered him and placed him there, kept him still on those ropes. And again, he is, he's taller than Canelo, but 
I want to see how he's going to look. See, is there still a big question mark? But nonetheless, don't be on those ropes. That's a good place for you not to have anywhere to run to. And yes, you're strong. And yes, you're Canelo. But you can't get knocked out. You're still a man at the end of the day. Uh, what can hurt Charlo? Lunging in <laughs> and not preserving your energy. Yes, you're on a knockout win streak, but you're on a knockout win streak with the guys at 154 pounds. You're moving up to 168 pounds, and Canelo has an iron chin. Triple G couldn't get this man off his feet. What makes you think you're going to do it? And we don't even know that what, that, that, that weight that with the power, but the weight is going to transfer. We don't know. Big question mark. Um, here's another segment. Why is Charlo dangerous? Straight punches. Straight punches give Canelo problems. Uh, we've seen it in the Bival fight. Straight punches give uh, uh, Canelo problems. Uh, this is going to be a huge factor in the fight. The jab of Jamel Charlo, one of the best jabs in the game. Um, and he's consistent with it. And it's a heavy jab. It's not those soft little peppering jab, nothing like that. Jamel Charlo's consistency. Uh, Jamel Charlo's not going to be mesmerized about the fact that it's Canelo. A lot of times the guys get in front of Canelo and they kind of get starstruck and just stare at him. Jamel Charlo's not going to do none of that. All right, he does. He's also a, a unified champion. He also has money. He also has you know prestige and the stuff that comes with him. He's not going to be mesmerized by by Canelo standing across from him. Um, let's see what else. I don't care mentality. You need a certain type of mentality to be in there in the ring with Canelo Alvarez, and I do believe that Jamel Charlo does possess that. He doesn't like anybody in the sport. It's all business. Um, Great maneuvering with uh, with his hands. I mentioned that earlier. He's a champion at heart and mind, and he can fight at all ranges. That's very important. He doesn't just fight in the outside. He can do that very well, but he can get in the inside, and he can rough the guy up as well. All right, while you look at Canelo Alvarez, he's best in the inside. What? Why is Canelo dangerous? Okay. Uh, well, number one is Canelo Alvarez. He's freaking dangerous. Uh, his patience, his timing, his accuracy, his power, very slippery. Uh, Canelo is great at reading his opponents, and he knows how to set traps, but he also knows how to move you into position so he can implement those traps. Um, let's see. What are my last thoughts? My last thoughts are, I think this was a bad fight to take for Canelo Alvarez. I think he saw somebody who seemed easy enough on paper, and I don't know why, because he was an undisputed champ at the time, but he seen somebody who seemed easy, and maybe he got the wrong twin. He should have called out Jamal. Jamal has a lot going on in his life with his 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 marital situation, his kids, his his wife and herself as a situation. And he's estranged from his twin brother Jamel. So that would have been the fight for him, because he could have easily won it because there's so much going on in his head. However, Jamel that was Jamal, I'm sorry. Jamel, on the other hand, everything is going right for him. He's on a winning streak. Um, there is a question of how his hand's gonna perform. There is a question of um how he's going to look at the weight, if his uh, power is going to translate. But Jamel Trello has an amazing jab. He's going to keep that jab pumping consistently. Heavy hands. Um, fast. Great leg work. Um, footwork, I'm sorry. Um, utilizes the whole ring. I just think there's a lot of problems that Jamel Trello poses for Canelo Alvarez that I don't think he's ready for. I think he looks like it looks like he's going to be an easy thing on paper, but I doubt it in reality. Those are my thoughts, Dr. Drop your thoughts down below. I want to hear what you have to say. Please like, please share, please subscribe to this channel.